The world is seeing a historic shift in wealth concentrations, and with that shift, a new narrative is emerging on income inequality. Asia Pacific has done a phenomenal job of catching up with advanced economies. For the first time in modern history, millionaires in Asia control more wealth than their counterparts in North America, Europe, and every other region in the world, respectively. In other words, Asia is officially the world's wealthiest region. Wealth expansion over the coming decades looks likely to be dominated by the region too. According to the 20th Wealth Rankings by a management consulting firm Capgemini, Asia's 5.13 million high net worth individuals, which refers to those with over 1 million US dollars in assets, held 17.4 trillion of wealth in 2015, beating out their Western peers. In comparison, North America had 4.78 million high net worth individuals with 16.6 trillion US dollars. Compared to the world as a whole, Taiwan has high average wealth and only moderate wealth inequality. There are about 356,000 US dollar millionaires in Taiwan in 2016. Taiwan's average wealth level in 2016 stands at US dollars. Uh, $172,800, which is well above those of most countries in the Asia-Pacific region and similar to that of Western Europe. Compared with countries around the world, Taiwan's wealth Gini coefficient of 0.74 lies in the moderate range and is one of the lowest among emerging market economies. The Gini coefficient is the most commonly used measure of the inequality in income distribution. A Gini coefficient of zero indicates completely equality of income, while a figure of one indicates complete inequality. However, amid these statistics is a growing disconnect between economic drivers of the past and the drivers of recent and future growth, as the expert we interviewed has warned. I think the fundamental question is that the industrial structure in Taiwan, which is still not as advanced as we think, even though we have um, high tech industries which earn um, a lot of money and also, relatively speaking, paid well for their workers, but their proportion of um, employing workers is still very low. We have to, in, um, in the sense that, uh, to speed up the transformation of industrial structure in Taiwan. Asia's period of miraculous economic growth was dependent on a surplus of unskilled labor that achieved enormously high productivity rates. But this new growth in Asian wealth has been driven primarily by financial services and technology sectors with significant skill bias, sectors that leave an unskilled, uneducated labor force behind. The disposable income gap between Taiwan's highest and lowest income earning households widened slightly in 2015, with the top 20% earning 6.06 .06 times what the bottom 20% made, according to government statistics. That's why long-term policies that drive the transformation in education industry to ensure growth are very important. Because of the political and environment in Taiwan now, I think no any government, they can have a long-term plan to improve the industrial structure in Taiwan and to have a long-term industrial policy. They will be criticized to favor certain capitalists, certain industries, or some certain enterprises. Asian Development Bank has named Taiwan as a prime example of how thoughtful education policies can increase the supply of skilled human capital to keep up with economic evolution. Previous data from the ADB confirms that up to 28 percent of current jobs in Asian economies are at risk of disappearing because of technological changes. However, increasing the quality of education would not only increase labor productivity by 17 percent, but could also double per capita income in a typical developing Asian economy. None of this should be news to Asian policymakers, though, whose young millionaires have mostly been educated in elite schools abroad. But in the region, topping charts millionaires and billionaires and the widening wage gap. It seems crucial now to turn the quality education and other policy changes to provide a promising future for everyone, 
not just the millionaires among them.